So chocolate and Aretha and Chanel are all dark brown because they are dairy sheep. They look different than the others. They're dairy sheep. They have a lot more wool. They come from Frisia, which is up in Northern Europe. And Casper is their breeding ram that they're in with. And Casper is also a cross. He's a cross between Katahdin and Frisian. So you notice he has less wool than they do, but he's three quarters Katahdin, one quarter Frisian. What that does is it adds milk in great quantity because this girl could give me triplets, feed the triplets, and give me a quart or a quart and a half a day. So it's wonderful production of milk. Um, so what he'll do is he'll add that to these other pure Katahdins so that we get a little bit more of that Katahdin Frisian cross. Oh, he wants some more. So you can see the difference of a Katahdin. These are full Katahdins, these two. Like that. And the, the, the one quarter Frisian, three quarters Katahdin. We have in this is a Frisian, Katahdin, 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 and a Frisian Katahdin mix. So what I'm doing is I'm putting this Dorper who has a very strong loin. Look at how broad his loin is. That's very desirable from a meat standpoint. So we're adding his Dorper meatiness onto these others. So we're going to get some very broad, very meaty looking animals. So Queenie is the girl with the freckles here. She's a 100% Katahdin, as is Vera. And she um, gives us twins every year. She takes good, good care of her babies. The, the ability to mother is the number one priority that you look for in when you choose a breeding animal. They can be wonderful and all different kinds, but if they don't take care of their baby, they're not in my breeding program, not at all. If you're buying for breeding, you might want to um, get one who's already bred, who's already given birth, and who's already raised some. If you're starting out yourself, it's always a good idea to start with one that's an experienced you, as opposed to just buying a, a, a yearling because they may not be a very good mother. So you may waste all that effort wait, waiting five months and then come out there and they didn't, they didn't take care of their baby. So the reason that we have this Dorper here is because Dorpers are really well known for carcass quality. Look at the broad back that he has and nice hindquarters and he gives that to his babies and to their carcasses um, he they say that the quality of meat is as good as a Katahdin the Katahdin meat is definitely better that, in my opinion and that of many of my customers and the Dorper meat is also very very good um, it has a lot nicer texture uh, better carcass than a lot of the you know, like Barbados is kind of delicious, but thin and sort of skinny. Not, a, not as much for uh, you to work with. Um, they're typically a manageable, <laughs> easygoing kind of animal. Uh, not like some of the meat breeds that can be a little bit rambunctious. If you think about in cattle, there are um, a black Angus, which has got delicious meat, but they're really strong, kind of aggressive, compared to a Jersey Maid, which is a little bit more laid back because they're a dairy sheep, a dairy cow. Similarly, these Frisians have a very laid back personality because they, for centuries, they've been used as dairy 
animals. They've grown up in the households of the, of the people. So they have a really nice disposition. They're large. They're everything I want except they have wool. And so, uh, and their babies are a little bit different temperament than the Katahdin's. The Katahdin, if he loses his mother, he looks around, he says, where's my mother? I gotta find her. And he's proactive. If the Frisian loses her mother, misplaces her mother, she stands in the middle and says, oh, woe is me, I'm gonna die, oh, mom, where are you? So she has to come, she, the mother has to come and take care of her. So by crossing the breeds, I get just the, what I want from one or the other. The Katahdins maybe don't grow quite as fast, but by adding the Dorper, that I get that growth of the carcass, and it's not so much high growth, it's broad growth, and they have no wool to deal with like the Frisian. So I like to use these three breeds and to do it very strategically to produce something like him. If you have a pure Katahdin versus a Katahdin Dorper cross, what are you seeing as far as the weight difference when they're ready for slaughter? It's not so much the weight difference because that's something that is more or less controlled by your timing. But what I see is the carcass quality and the carcass quality, you know, there's a grading system. And so the, the loins of a, of a cross with Dorper, they have more loins, which is where your chops come from. And so you want to have nice, big, beefy loins. That's not the right word. Meaty, meaty loins. Um, compared to uh, the narrow frame of, of a Katahdin. The Katahdins are always very delicious, but sometimes you just think that the chops could be a little larger, and that's where the Dorper really excels. It's not so much the total weight, although when I've looked at the statistics, um, the statistics reveal that the, it's the percentage of usable meat from a carcass. There's a phrase for that, and I just can't think of it right this second. But it's greater on the, on the Dorpers compared to like a Barbados or something like that. Or Chevriot, you know, they're, they're really great sheep, but this is to make meat.